Hello, this is an overview of the update that came to Kioth a couple days ago, and I'd like to go over everything, especially the changes from licenses to users. And so it used to be such that use licenses had a set expiry and then a level, and now it's changed that when you use a user, it creates a uh, when you use a license, it creates a user, um, and if it's if it's just key, it'll create a, a user with the username as the key, and then the password is also the key. And uh, what's very different is the subscriptions. So it used to be uh, only level, and now it will give a, a subscription. So I'm gonna create a key real quick, and uh, it's gonna be level one by default. Then we come over to subscriptions. But by default, there's a subscription for for level one. I'm gonna create another one. Uh, just call it test, and then whatever level the keys. So you could have multiple for for the same level. And then I'm gonna come over to my client. I'm gonna want to use that key. The application information also changed. Uh, during the uh, June 23rd update. This is not common, though I wanted to improve the security, and uh, now there's randomized hashing, basically, for the the secret and the seller key. So that was, that was a mandatory change. Usually, you won't have this happen to you. All right, so we'll see when we redeem this license. print out the response and then I can show you what the subscriptions looks like. Alright, let's take this and bring it into JSON. Beautify. Alright, so see, we can see that we have the default subscription, and then it has the expiry, which was the length of the key, essentially, and then another one. So you can have as many as you want, and it, when it when it makes a user, uh, which is what it does when uh, when you redeem a license, first it tries to log in. If it can't log in, it it uh, it tries to register, and that's done on the server side. So you're not going to get any useless errors like other systems have, um, and then it'll give a subscription for each of the subscriptions you set for that level. So I got default and test because default and test are level one and my key was level one. All right, let's show how to change applications. So you can change like this, come into here, click create application, you wanna create another one. If you only have one application uh, here, it'll just automatically come into here, but then you can do change if you want to. Delete to delete the application, pause uh, to pause the uh, subscriptions for your application uh, so everyone's like time would stop refresh if you want to refresh the the secret of the application and then rename if you want to rename the, the name then you have import keys needs to come in as this format so it's so your key so ABCD 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 that that and then if you had more keys you would just do that and put a comma like this ABCD CD, maybe. So, oh, and actually, sorry, it's one, and then this line goes there. So, like such, and then you just repeat the process as many as you need to. So that's pretty nice. Uh, hard drive reset and delete all. Some of these need to be removed. Updates been quite crazy recently, and then soon with the edit there'll be a, a spot to like delete. There'll, there'll be a, like a a uh, drop down list of like all the subscriptions, and then there'll be like a button to delete one if you want to. And then if the the user has no active subscriptions, so if all their subscriptions have expired, they can't log in. But you can use the uh, the upgrade function to I think it's above. They can use the upgrade function, and they don't need to log in for that. And all they do is have the username and their key. They input those, and then uh, if it's valid, it'll add a subscription to their account. 
given that you have set this. And so if, if you didn't have a default one for whatever reason, uh, which you should, but if you didn't, then you just come here and you create one. So if it says no uh, subscription created for key level, that's the reason why you need to come over here and create a subscription for the, the level of key you're trying to use. Uh, webhooks are not Discord webhooks, contrary <laughs> to uh, popular belief. They're, uh, they're API endpoints that you don't want to put in your client. So let's say I wanted to to delete this key. And so the, the, the API link to delete this key is The API I like to do with this key. Why do I have a okay, I need to fix that. That should have been a hash value instead of something like this. Okay, and alright, so that you know this is the link to do it. But you don't want to put this in your client or else people are gonna be able to delete other keys or, or whatever function they're not supposed to. So you come to you come and you copy this link right here, or all the way uh, wherever you want to. So like let's say here, you don't want the you don't want uh, anyone to be able to see this part of the link. And then you come over to webhooks, create a webhook, you put that for the webhook endpoint. Uh, if you need the user agent, you put that. And then you add it. And you're given you're supplied with a webhook ID. And then your client after login you do can't have that. And then webhook the webhook ID. And then the parameters. So that's the that's the ending of the URL that goes in the client. So in this case, it's just the key. And then on the server, it will add it will add plus plus. So it adds these together on the server, and uh, this part will never be shown to your client, thus making it secure from the endpoint getting leaked. Uh, variables are somewhat similar, except for they're returned to the uh, to the client, but they're only accessible after after login. So it's just a string that you want to keep on the server side. Um, this is also a nice feature. You can uh, block IPs or hardware IDs, so another good thing. This is where you set your Discord webhook, right here. So that was at all confusing. I, I have made it such that you shouldn't be able to uh, to post Discord webhooks anymore. Um, Whatever it is, you, you shouldn't be able to post them though. Because I, I filter it out. Alright, and then there's custom error messages. So, if you uh, print out the error message from Kioth, you can change it here. This is for reseller. So, on the reseller page, uh, or for resellers, you put your webhook secret, or your Celex webhook secret. Uh, so, I'll go ahead and pull up. Yeah, it would be in settings, and then leave its notifications. Yeah, it's in here. It's here. It's one of those. Okay, and then um, the product ID and all that, and then it'll show a uh, Celex embed to them, and then and then you need to set this for the the product. So you create a product. Currently only working for Celex, I need to implement Shopee too. Uh, one day, three seller keys, for example. In service, we are. We've got balance automatic. I will do a, bunch, a good formal tutorial eventually, this is not the best. And then webhook URLs right here, I need to set this. Alexis, you know, okay. And then hidden, 
And then it should be username, I believe. Okay, it should be already. And that's the reseller system. And so you can create resellers and uh, managers. Managers have access to essentially everything except for the top bar for, for the applications. That they can't do any of these, these things up here. Um, they have access to about everything else. Whereas the resellers uh, only have the ability to view and uh, create keys that, that they have the balance for. And you can now edit the balance too. So if you want to change the balance, that can easily be done. Um, I will fix that. That needs to be fixed. Upgrade to support server cost. And then owner ID. These were also reset as stated earlier. And these were also reset. They're, it's yeah. It, it's usually longer than this. I need to fix the, the creation. And then this is the link for if you want to automatically send to, uh, you want to automatically send keys to your customers instead of restocking, which is pretty nice. You, you do need seller, uh, seller, the seller subscription to do that, but pretty affordable. It's it's nineteen ninety nine per year. Most applications should make more than that. So all you do is you put this here. You're gonna want to change things maybe level one amount one. Format text. Where's the days? Expiry one, so one days. So if you were selling one day keys, you know, then it would be fine. But and if it's, you're not, you can change that. You can also do decimals. So it's just a decimal of a day. So obviously 0 0.5 would be 12 hours, and then 0 0.25 would be six hours. There's also file uploads, which you can find on the website, and then you can also come and get them. Uh, you can also do them if you have the Discord bot, which requires seller subscription. You can come in and upload files right here. So. Oh, and that's because of the seller keys invalid, but usually you return, return uh, positive ID, which will come and set right now. Which I want to change again after the video because it should be the longer. But so I won't leak it. And that's going to return the file ID. There we go. And it deletes it automatically for security. And then it's stored encrypted on the kiosk server. So, uh, pretty good. Returns as a um, as a byte array now in the new examples. So, it's far better than some of the older file download uh, client examples. That's about all I can think of about right now. Uh, I will do a more formal video when my nice microphone comes, but hopefully that's enough to uh, to explain and elaborate on things. Let me know if you have any questions.